So again, I'm Kaya Thomas. I'm currently an iOS developer at Calm. Formerly, I worked at Slack on the messaging and notification teams. And I'm the creator of Riri2, which we're going to be chatting about today. In 2009 and the early 2010s, these were some of the most popular, popular young adult titles. And these titles were all written by white authors, and all of the protagonists are white teenagers. In 2016, the Cooperative Children's Book Center said that out of 3,400 children's books published in the United States, only 22% were about people of color, and only 12 of those 22% were written by people of color. So why is this important? Thinking back to those titles I showed you, those were some of the most popular titles that I read when I was in high school. And in high school is a time where I started to really think about my own self-image and how I was being represented in the books I was exposed to. I've always been a really avid reader, but when I was in high school and going to my library and local bookstores, I realized that none of the characters in the books were described to be like me. And it started to really affect my self-esteem. I started to think, is my story not important? Am I invisible? Do I not matter? And then I started researching to see what books were out there that had black girl characters or were written by black women. And I realized there was actually a, a good amount of books out there, but I didn't know how to find them. It took a lot of work. And I thought maybe there could be a resource for this, but I had no idea how to create something like that. So how do you go from having this kind of idea sparked from a problem I faced myself to going to an actual application. So in 2014, uh, I started to learn about development. And so I thought, okay, I wanna make a resource from this problem I had, but I had no idea how to create an app. So this is really the development process. You go from designing to building, testing, then release and maintain. So when I first started this process, I actually just said, okay, first let's collect all of the books. I did this by putting them all in a Word document, right? So no code yet. So I designed this idea and said, okay, I wanna create some type of resource. I started building up this Word document. And then I used what's called PhoneGap, which at the time was a HTML, CSS way to prototype mobile apps. And I tested it out with friends and said, okay, what do you think about this? Would this be a viable mobile application? But I didn't get to the release stage, right? I had this Word document and I had this kind of prototype, but I didn't really know how to collect the two. So I had to start over again, right? Start the process over again, start at that design step and say, okay, I wanna really design a real mobile app now. In the building process, I was learning as I was building. So I used free resources like Ray Wenderlich and AppCoda at the time to learn iOS development so that I could then build a real application and then I had to turn that Word document from a Word document into a database that I can then put into the app. So I used Parse at the time, which is unfortunately shut down now, but Firebase would be a equivalent to that. And I put the books from that Word document, manually put them into the database, and it started out with about 300 books. Then again, I went to family and friends and said, what do you think? Does, does this look good? Um, and then I released it. And this part was really nerve wracking. And to be honest, when I first released it, it was a really, really simple application. And that's okay. It's not about having perfection. I knew that this was a problem and I wanted to create a resource to help solve that problem. And no matter if it's perfect or the best app in the world, I just needed to get it out there. And then step five is the main maintenance process. So maintaining it and working on it for the last five years has been really rewarding. But I'm constantly going through this development process, starting out designing new ideas, then trying to build those ideas, testing it out with users and folks, and then releasing it. So from the first time in August 24th, 2014, that I released this app to now, the app has come a long way. When I first released it, it was really just a simple list with just the titles and the authors. There was only two categories, children's and young adult. 
And now it's more of a rich application that you can see the covers, you can see the details of the app, you can share, you can search, there's more defined categories. So going through that development process and continually iterating on the app has turned it into a much better experience over the last five years. But the most important thing is the impact that Reread2 has had on parents, educators, librarians, authors. It's been incredible over the last five years to hear from librarians who have been able to make their community libraries more diverse. And from parents who've been able to find books for their kids. And educators who have been able to make their classroom libraries more diverse for all their students, regardless of what their background is. And in February 2018, I had the honor of being featured in the App Store, which allowed hundreds of thousands of people to be exposed to what Riri2 is doing and to see it as a free resource they can use to diversify the libraries and classrooms and homes of youth in their communities. So for the future of Riri2, it's, I'm not done, right? It's an all continuous iteration process. I want to reach 1,000 plus books in the directory. Right now, there's about 900 plus. So in the last five years, the directory has tripled. And that's really been great because I've been able to crowdsource. In the app, there's a suggestion feature. So users have been able to tell me what books I should add in the directory. And so I've been able to triple the resource over the last five years. And I hope to continue to do that and continue to have it grow. I want to update the app to more modern design. As we know, technology and UX is always changing. There's always a new way to do things. And I want to make sure that the experience of Riri2 is on the caliber for the best apps out there. Technically, there's always more work. Uh, the back end for Riri2, like I said, was based off of Parse, which is defunct. And so I need to kind of refresh that. And there's a lot of user features that I would like to have, like users to be able to create lists and things that they want to read, and really just make the experience better and better and better. So some takeaways from my journey of going from this idea that I just had because it was a problem that I experienced growing up to a real mobile application that's been able to help tens of thousands of people. If you're trying to figure out kind of what tech projects or passion projects you can work on, think about you know, problems you've experienced in your own life or problems that you've seen in your community. Tech might not be the solution to that problem, but you might be able to create some type of tool that can be really helpful or resourceful to that problem that you're facing or your community is facing. And I think this is a really important one. You do not have to quit your day job <laughs> to do this. This has always been a side project for me. I'm a full-time iOS developer, and so when I can, I spend a few hours a week you know, working on this, but it's not my full-time job, and I don't plan on making it my full-time job. It's a passion project for me, and it's a free resource. I don't plan to make money for it or to charge people for it, and I want it to be a free resource out there. So you don't have to feel pressured to quit your job and make a startup or try to make a bunch of money off of your side project. Um, it could be something that you're just passionate about and you want to create a tool or resource in your community. And ship it. I think that this one's really, really hard, but you just have to ship it. No matter if it's perfect, if you even think it's too simple, you have to get it out there. Because once you get it out there, you don't know who it's going to impact or who it's going to help. That first version of the app, just being a simple list, it may seem like, oh, why would you create an app like that? It's like so simple. But you see the impact that it's had over the last years, and I've been able to continually iterate on it. So you don't need to ship something when it's perfect. You just ship it when it's done. right? When you've done something, you're finished, ship it, and you can always go back and continue to work on it. So I hope that you've been able to learn how you can potentially turn an idea for a problem that you've experienced into a real life product that can impact so many people that you never would have thought. Thank you so much.